Hello everyone, and welcome to the next episode in our Let's Code a Mining Turtle. We uh, left off working on our Better Excavate program, and we're going to continue uh, with that today. But what I wanted to show you briefly before we got started was a couple of things that I learned uh, about Sublime Text. Now, uh, I'm still very much new to this um, sort of an IDE, more of a text editor, simpler, very cool. Very, I, I've, I've actually been using it uh, quite a bit lately. Uh, and so I've been learning a few things. One of the things I, I learned I wanted to show you was last time we drug, we opened up our Better Excavate program and we drug it over here. But what you can actually do is take the whole folder and drag it over here. Let me show you what that does. If you hit uh, Control KB, um, it will bring up the sidebar here. And you actually see here, the, the whole folder structure is now um, here ready for you to use. And you can then, if you want to double click this or drag it over, uh, it will open up for you. But there's an even better way to do that. Let's go ahead and close this down. Hit Control, Control uh, KB. Now let's hit Control P. And you see right there, if you had a whole bunch of programs, it'd all be listed down through there. So um, Sublime Text uses a thing called fuzzy searching, uh, which means you can type part of <laughs> the, the the word there. If you're like, I think it's better excavate. I'm not sure. Bex, <laughs> it's going to bring it up for you. It's going to search through all of your files and find what you need. Um, also, a thing that uh, would be helpful for you is when you are working with um, these types of files, if you go to view and then to syntax, you can actually go up to open all with current extension as, and then select computer craft. And it will come up like you see here with all of the cool highlighting. Let me bring up my uh, window here. So you see, I also have the Lua reference ma manual with me here, uh, as well as the computer craft API. So when we left off, we had um, made it so our mining turtle would go around and around in circles, not in circles, in a square, right? And a 10 by 10 or, or a size by size uh, square. And so I was looking at our our list of to-dos here. We need to work on checking for the fuel, tracking position, and tracking uh, the inventory. But what I thought we'd work on today, which what interested me the most, was tracking our position. Now, it the turtle can effectively move in three dimensions, though it itself can only move in two. It can only move forward and backward, and it can only move up and down. It cannot move left to right. The only way you can do that is by turning. So it has basically um, one plane that it can turn in. And so we're going to have to figure out how to keep track of what plane it is to know how to keep track of its position. So what we are going to do is we're going to have, you see, I have my uh, iron toolbox, toolbox, <laughs> iron chest here. I guess it could be a toolbox uh, as, as well as the turtle. Now, Minecraft handles uh, directions in, in an interesting way. If you see there, I'll point it out a little bit with my mouse, the F. The F is oops, the position. So you see when we're facing south, the F is zero, west is one, north is two, and we were facing east when we were working on our uh, program last time. Well, we are going to use the same kind of idea, uh, but it's going to be a relative position. So relative to the, um, the iron chest, we are going to have the turtle move. Now, if you, if you watch, when we're facing zero and we move forward, watch what happens to Z or Z. It gets larger. Okay, now if we're facing one, Watch what happens to X. It gets smaller. It's negative numbers are getting larger, so that means that our coordinates are getting smaller. And then you can imagine north is going to be the opposite of south, so numbers Z gets smaller, and then um, X is going to now get bigger. So we are going to use that to our advantage as well. So let's jump back over to the code real quick. And we're going to be uh, continuing the idea of using functions uh, for encapsulation and code reusage. Now, what we could do, you could just do it manually. And every time you wanted to do an operation, um, you could just throw in the, the lines of code that we're going to work on. But um, for the sake of the tutorial, 
uh, we're going to actually break these out into functions. We can always go back and refactor it back into the code or out of the code, however we want to do it. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of this. Oh, and uh, shift delete for Windows users is not cut. I think I mentioned this last time. It's actually not delete, it's cut. So to actually delete the line, you hit uh, control shift K. So we're going to have some different functions here. Well, first of all, let's get our, let's get our variables up here. We're going to have X, Y, and Z. And for our direction, we're going to use D. Now, um, when you're using Lua, you can do multiple declarations uh, like that. Uh, another cool thing you can do with, this is with Sublime Text. If you press Control D for Windows users, it will select that word, or sorry, that, well, it's considered a word. Um, you keep doing that, and now you can actually edit all of them at once. Pretty cool, huh? So we're going to set that back to zero, though. Okay, so we've set our variables here. Now let's think about our functions. What are the methods that we want this thing to be able to do? Well, uh, we want it to be able to... Um, oh, sorry. And you see these little the drop down things here. These are called code snippets and you can develop your own. Uh, there's some built in and uh, we'll just be using the regular function here. So let's make ourselves a go forward. And we'll go ahead and we don't need any arguments here. Let's see, we'll do a go back. You can also do it manually like I did, not thinking about it. Uh, funk. Um, we want to go up. And the reason I'm not naming it just up is because, well, the, the API already uses up for the turtle dot up or turtle dot down. So I'm just not going to repeat that. Don't know that it would cause any problems, but you never know. Funk. There we go. Uh, go down. Tab. Yeah. And you can tab through this snippet as well. Yeah, I'll show you that with a, a little loop here in a second. And then let's, we're going to need a function. Uh, now turn right is already in use. So let's use a T right. <laughs> T right. And, and then um, T left. End. Okay, so let's, let's do this. Let's get rid of, not rid of him, but let's move him down. And we can get rid of this for now. And just sort of get this out in its own little space here so we can stare at it. Okay, so going forward. Well, uh, we're going to want to either increment or decrement the uh, X um, or the Z value, depending on which direction we're going. So uh, we need to work on turning first. Okay, so um, D... The direction, we're going to have it equal either 0, 1, 2, or 3. Now, we're going to go back to the modulo function. Modulo is super uh, handy in this kind of situation because what's going to happen is, let's say we turn right. Okay, that's going to actually increment our D. Okay, but if we keep turning right over and over again, it's going to get up to be a fairly large number. So we don't want to do that. We want to mod it. And not with that. <laughs> um, so we're going to go back to the parentheses. And this time we're going to use modulo 4. Now remember with mod 2, uh, you're, you'll either get a 0 or a 1. With mod 4, you're going to get a 0, 1, 2, or 3. We'll do the same with um, oops, equals left, but instead of plus one, we're going to go minus one. Okay, so now every time, we're going to go ahead and add this, turtle oops, dot turn right, and turtle dot turn left. So now anytime we call this function, the turtle is going to turn it's going to change our D depending on um, how many times it turns. It's going to go from a, a number from 0 to, to 3. 
Okay, so now let's work on our go forward function. Now here we're gonna have some different conditions. Um, and so we're gonna have an if statement. Hey, oh, there's no code completion there. Oh, well, doesn't matter. Okay, so now depending on what D is doing, so if D equals zero, then we're gonna do something, right? So I'm gonna show you, this is, it's like if you wanna do a block quote, block quote, uh, sorry, block comment, if I could talk, there we go. So if D is something, then we're gonna do something. Um, we're gonna actually, we're gonna go forward well, first. Uh, turtle forward, there we go. Um, and then depending on what the value of D is, we're gonna do something with X or Z, and we're gonna go plus or minus. One of the two, that's not a minus. So we need to figure out which way our um, variables need to be incremented or decremented. So we're gonna do that by looking at our coordinates here. So when D is zero, we see we want Z to increment. So let's do that. So Z equals Z plus one. I'm gonna increment it one position. Now, I could put this in this kind of format here, sort of the block style, but because it's a very simple um, statement here, we're gonna have just put it, put it all on one line. All right, so if D equals one, what should we do? Let's find out. So now D equals one, and we need to make X smaller. That is not X. X minus one end. Okay, so now we can just do the opposite. So if D equals two, then we know we want um, Z to get smaller. And if D is three, I keep saying equals, is, we want X to get bigger. All right, so now we can do that the opposite for go back. So we're gonna say turtle dot um, back. And so we want to, instead of incrementing, decrement, make it the opposite. All right, very cool. Now uh, go up and go down are fairly straightforward. We just need to, um, in this case, increment y. Uh, so y equals y plus one, and y equals y minus one. So we have taken our ideas here and we've placed them into functions. So now we need to go and refactor our code here and add in our functions. So instead of uh, just using the normal turtle dot down, we'll say, yeah, go, not do, <laughs> go down. Like that. See, there we go, go down. So, oops, gotta add this, or we'll do anything. Turtle dot up, and turtle dot down. All right, so go forward. T, right? And let's, let's go ahead and use our cool, see if, how does this work? Can I do that? Yeah. So instead of saying turtle dot forward, we will say go forward. And instead of saying turn, hey, that's not right. The other one was right, wasn't it? Yeah. So this is going to be, why are you doing that? Oh, you're doing a column select. Okay, whatever. Go uh, T right. Let's see if this works. There we go. So select the whole thing and then uh, hit Control D, and then I can say T left. Okay, very cool. So let's go ahead and get rid of our white space here. Control Shift K a few times. 
So, yeah, I think I think it looks pretty good. Um, there's some white space here. Do do. Well, it's gray space. So let's test it. Let's uh, throw in some for loops. Now you can see some of the code snippets at work here. So we hit for and hit enter. Um, I can actually hit the tab button and tab through the value. value. So let's just do it four times. So let's uh, turn left, T left. And let's go ahead and write our value out to the screen just to see what it looks like. And we'll do something really simple. So when you do numbers to screen to the screen, you have to cast it to a string. So yeah, print our direction out. And then let's go back the other way. So for I for uh, T right term dot right D. Oop. Do string D. All right, let's try it out. Word of F3. Let's go better excavate. Here we go. Very cool. Very, very cool. All right. Yep, and you see uh, it printed out D3210 and then back again 1230. Well, that will do it for today's episode. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, it was definitely uh, fun for me to figure this part out, keeping track of our um, direction and also uh, our position uh, in reference to our iron chest here. So um, we will pick up next time working on either the check fuel or check inventory section. And uh, I hope that uh, you guys feel like you've learned something. If there's anything that you uh, want me to explain further, if something I wasn't clear on, let me know in the comments. I'll do my best to explain it better next time. And uh, I appreciate it. Guys, go and try this on your own. Uh, try to figure this out. Uh, if, you're, if you're pretty new to programming, it'd be good to just start with a, you know, uh, open up a brand new screen in your uh, Sublime Text and start editing, start typing and see if you can uh, reproduce the same thing that we've done here. Uh, and that will definitely help you out quite a bit. So uh, I look forward to seeing you all again next time. And uh, have a good day.